I think that would have been my speaker. Yeah. Yeah. It's good enough. We should be all set. Great. <laughs> okay, so we're um, now recording. Uh, sorry, I thought my sister kicked back on, but now it's off. Um, so we'll call the meeting to order at 6.33 p.m. Um, in attendance this evening in the room are myself, um, Emily, and Suzanne. Uh, Leanne and Mark cannot make it this evening. Uh, and on Zoom, we've got Merle. Um, First order of business is to review and make any changes to the agenda. Are there any additions or deletions to be made to the agenda? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to the minutes of June 5th. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of June 5th as written? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of June 5th. Great, we have a motion to approve the minutes of June 5th as written by Suzanne. Is there a second? I will second that. Is there any further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, we'll vote. All those in favor of approving the minutes of June 5th as written, please signify by saying aye, or raising your hand. Aye. aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Great, motion carries. And the minutes have been approved. Um, next up on the agenda is public works. Um, so Mark is not here this evening to give any kind of updates. The only update that I've got which is less an update than a placeholder, is that we're still waiting to peg a date for the Longley Bridge um, TAP project pre-construction meeting. Um, as soon as that meeting gets scheduled, I'll send an email out to everybody so they're aware of it. Um, but that has yet to be done. And that is the only update that I'm aware of as far as public works goes, unless anybody has anything else in Mark's absence. All right, if there's nothing else on public works, we can pivot to visitors a little early. Um, Merle, we're going to go to visitors now since we're up on the agenda for a little bit early. decision about that tonight, but we can certainly take it under advisement when the time comes. Um, I don't know how much long they've got on their lifespan. Um, so, you know, if they're going to be around for another four or five years, I, I, I'd rather not make a formal decision tonight on what comes next. Well, Charlie, you could. I guess if you think, you know, if you want to, I, I guess, you know, something Pride and the feeling inside you for those flags can't be taught or given to anybody. It, it comes from being in certain situations and environments, and you just don't know what that flag means to some people. I, I just have a feeling, and, and so when I see those flags, especially a line down the street, or I have a flag flying on my fence. And every time I see a flag anywhere, I, I just and it's just pride and, and, and things have gone through, I guess, it's why. And I guess a lot of people like to pay a bit of attention on me, not to them. But it does to me a lot. Especially, I think, better. And I don't see why you couldn't make a commitment the next time around. But, yeah, because it used to be, Charlie, we used to have all flags. I don't know if you remember or not, but I know we did. 
gee, send us five veterans and say, yeah, sure. Next time around, we'll put all the flags up. I don't, what, why can't you say that? I, it was more just a logistical thing. I mean, if we, we could tonight uh, make a commitment to put all flags back up, my only, my only thing is that what's probably going to happen is that when the banners that are up are aged enough that they need to be replaced, at that point, it's going to come back to the board as to what to do. And so at that point, the board will make a decision about purchasing new flags or banners. And my only hesitation of making any kind of a formal commitment tonight is that it would then have to be memorialized, essentially. And then in two, five, ten years, someone's got to remember. And you know what I mean? So. The banners were new last year. They were new. So if the banners were new last year, they probably have at least another five years in them before they're going to need to be replaced, just given how I would project the age of them. And so I guess my only, I, it's, it's not, I, I completely understand what you're saying, Merle. My hesitation in making any kind of commitment about that tonight is that there's a good chance that when the time comes for those banners to be replaced, no one on the board might, might be here. Um, and so I don't know other than having something in the minutes from many years ago that might not get remembered. I, I don't like know. How that would yeah, I don't know how we would, I don't know how we would be sure of that, if that makes sense. Well, are you in favor of all flags? I, I'm in flavor of flags. I like the banners too. I mean, I, you know, I guess, I think we should have the flag prominently displayed in as many places as we can. Whether that's every poll, I I can go either way. Well, I tell you, it hurts. It's sad, Charlie. You just don't understand. You don't understand. I don't know why you folks, oh well, I guess talking to a blank wall. I do have a question, I guess, about the streetscape. I don't know. I don't know. No, I'm, thanks for hearing me. I'm done. Okay. I appreciate it, Merle. Um, and I, and I do, I, okay. And Merle's gone. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, seeing no other visitors and we can certainly pivot back to visitors at seven if someone shows up and we're still here. Um, Moving on to old business, uh, the municipal wastewater project. So just a couple updates there, primarily yeah, just around. Oh, one second. Yep. No, no problem. I'm moving too fast. Can you slow down. So just a few updates around the wastewater project. Um, two funding items that we're working through now. The first one is, so the state ARPA awards that were given to us, which totaled about $2.7 million. Right now we're working with the state to develop a allocation table for that money, essentially how we're gonna spend it and what the date is we need to spend it by. That's part of the grant agreement. Um, hopefully we're gonna finalize that this week so that they can get that grant moving forward. Um, the bulk of the ARPA money we're going to put towards construction of the system. We are going to use some of those funds for land purchase as well. Um, in parallel with this, we are waiting for the bond bank to issue the next two sets of CWSRF loan subsidies. Um, folks remember back through this process, um, the state clean water state revolving fund, we've gone there for, um, funding on two previous occasions it's been amended twice this is a third amendment to it i believe um, and the reason why it's broken out into so many different individual loan subsidy pools is because the more we break the projects out the more subsidy we can mm -hmm. get so this should be the last round of srf loan subsidy um, amendments that we're doing with srf for for this amount and those funds are going to go towards 
uh, finishing the final engineering for the project. So we've kind of got two tracks of funding that we're trying to secure now so that we can start deploying the funds for ARPA money and the WSRF funds. So I don't know when the bond bank is going to come back with, with those documents, but those will cross the table as soon as we get them for signatures. Um, same thing as last time. And in the ARPA agreement, like I said, we should finalize the table that we have and get the state to agree to it. Um, only other update regarding the project is that we are trying to work through the easements. Um, so the easements that we need for the system are uh, relating to the um, ability to go on the properties to construct the system and then to be able to enter the properties to maintain the system going forward. So um, the attorneys started working on those about a month ago. Um, that's kind of our next priority area from a non-funding administrative standpoint that we need to get nailed down. I'm foreseeing sort of like... Yeah, I mean, I uh, fully expect a handful of landowners to push back on it and do is talk on them and try to convince them and show them the numbers and the reasons why this is in the best interest of all property owners. Yeah, so if landowners do end up refusing, there is a process called condemnation whereby the town can basically get permission to, to do this. Um, we don't want to go that route because it's time consuming, it's expensive, and nobody wants to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, the hope and the expectation is that, you know, if we get everybody together and we lay out you know, lay out the, the finances of the project and what we're doing, um, when you stack up everything, you know, it's, it's, in, it's in the best interest of the property owners to look into this. Um, I think we're probably looking a little bit at kind of a lot of the same kind of feeling that is around the water system. Um, I wasn't here for that, but I'm, I'm guessing that a lot of the same conversations that we had then are being had now. So. purchase um, that we talked about two or three meetings ago. Um, we've got an update there and a decision to make. Um, we will move that to executive session. Um, 1 VSA 313 section A2 allows the board to negotiate um, or discuss the negotiation of security real estate purchases or lease options in executive session to not put the body at a disadvantage having that information in the public. So we'll put a pin in that to the end of the meeting. Uh, that's all I got as far as updates go on the wastewater project. Um, on the streetscape side of things, we met with the engineering team last week as well as representatives from VTrans. Um, the main thrust of the conversation was around the scaled back um, scope that this board discussed. Uh, a month or two ago, um, and essentially getting um, VTrans's buy-in with what we want to do and how we want to do it. Um, essentially, the takeaways from the meeting with VTrans are that, uh, how do I phrase this? In order to get the project done on Main Street, not take over the Class 1 town highway, um, and have things meet VTrans, specs and requirements, um, at a minimum, we're going to basically stop work somewhere about the town hall range building. Um, there'll be no more work from there to the intersection or up 242 or down 118. Mm -hmm. The reason the reason is because they will not let us construct sidewalks that have no end points. And so if there's no crosswalks on 118 or 242, we can't put a sidewalk on 242. Um, what was the end reason we weren't putting a crosswalk on 118 or 242? The reason was that there was no way to essentially redesign that intersection in a way which 
did not make it a class one town highway, and then there was issues with abutting property owners with how reconstruction of that could or would work. The one thing that VTrans did say, and which, you know, long term we can think about is, and the way that we're kind of talking about it as a project now is kind of in phases. So phase one, which is what we're looking at now, would be rec center up through the town hall range building. Now from a funding perspective, that's still considered two projects because NBRC is funding the rec center to River Street portion of the work. But from a VTrans perspective, if we do the work from the rec center up through the town hall range building, um, they would see that as one body of work. And then if the town ever wanted to go forward and do work on the intersection and put in crosswalks, that would be like a phase two. So there's engineering stuff to support that. There's documentation to support that. If at some point in the future the town decided to do that, there's you know, there's a foundation on which to, to build pretty easily. Um, but essentially right now, this, the limits of this project are gonna be both ends of Main Street. Um, other points of discussion had to do with existing sidewalks and the ability to um, replace them. Um, there was some discussion about the north side of Main Street versus south side of Main Street. Similar discussions around the south side of Main Street has some sidewalk in certain sections, it doesn't go anywhere. So we have to talk to VTrans about putting in a mid-block crossing apparatus. Um, somewhere probably up around the Phineas in order to make that crosswalk that goes from the Phineas down by the inn functional mm -hmm. as a crosswalk. There are some issues as you go down towards the west side on the south side of Main Street just around parking where some of the uh, houses do not have driveways and so they park on the street. Um, so something, some things like that need to get worked out. The other point of conversation at the meeting was around parking at the rec center. Um, this is, you know, a big, a big deal and a big part of the project is to increase parking, pedestrian safety, access to that area. Um, and so the engineers are kind of toying around with a few different ideas of how to get parking to happen there. Um, VTrans will still not give us a yes or a no on whether or not they would allow seasonal parallel parking along there. Um, remember, they won't allow parallel parking on the roadside in the center unless we take it over due to mm -hmm. management, maintenance, snow removal. If we were to do just parallel parking in front of the rec center, they're a little more open to that conversation just because it would be an isolated area. It would be one cut basically, and it's essentially seasonal. I mean, people don't use that in the winter, so there's no need for snow removal. The other thing they're gonna look at, because we do have quite a bit of space there, is, um, you guys been to like Winooski, you know the traffic circle in Winooski? You mm -hmm. know where Sneakers is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know how in front of Sneakers, between that block and the traffic circle, there's an yeah. area where you kind of pull out into a secondary lane with yes. diagonal parking? So one thought was if you created something like that there, you could create a one-way lane where you come off of 118, hook into the driveway, and off of that lane, there's diagonal parking all down the line, so you can fit considerably more vehicles mm -hmm. there than you could parked on the side. Um, issues there have to do with sight distance. Um, the concern that got voiced was if you're coming around that corner heading out of town and somebody is stopped in the road because there's somebody backing out of a parking space and they're not turning in yet, is there enough sight distance to allow that person to stop before hitting a vehicle which is stopped? Yeah. Not that we don't have a whole laundry list of issues already happening there during any number of events, but that was the concern there. So um, the engineering team is now gonna basically take all of the feedback that they've gotten and plug it through kind of another preliminary design work. Um, and then that would come to the board for preliminary approval. And then we'd have a public meeting to look at with everybody. Is the sidewalk on on that corner still yeah. authorized? Yeah, the sidewalk down to the rec center and back would still be fine with VTrans. That's not a, that's not a problem. And yeah. was there any in that meeting with VTrans? Was there any conversation around the fact that for you know replacing and potentially curving the sidewalks in the center 
now am not putting parking spaces in, all the people who currently park on, on the, the street, sidewalk. on the sidewalk, it may or may not stop them from either going up on the curb or just parking even further right. into the road. Yeah, I guess you'd kind of hope that like most people wouldn't park. I mean, if there's a curb and a white line and more than half your vehicles in the travel way, you'd hope that common sense would prevail that they would not do that. Um, I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, like... Are they going to put it up, no parking signs? I mean, I mean, we don't want to litter Main Street with no parking right. signs. It should be pretty obvious that, like, it's a sidewalk, here's the curb, there's no parallel, there's no parking. Yeah, totally. um, I just remember a couple people in town being like, well, whatever, curb sidewalk. It's a parking spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's this give and take of, like, yeah. what do you want as a community? Do you want safe sidewalks for pedestrians and people that are ADA compliant that can be accessed or do you want parking? You know, and like, we're just trying to get the best outcome that tries to hit as many marks as we can. You know, one thing that, and this is where that crossover of projects does kind of get into, is there there is potentially opportunity here if things are being pulled or moved as part of the wastewater system potentially areas in the center where additional parking could be realized. Um, I won't get into specific properties, but I'm sure you can think of some where if there's a parking area here and their system is say behind it, you could potentially remove that and increase that parking area by at least a third. So, I mean, there's options we can look at. Um, it would mean working with, with landowners. Um, but that's kind of it. So they're going to come back with the revisions to that uh, plan for the board to look at, and then that would go out to a public meeting for the town to collect comment on, and then we would figure out what to do. So that's it for the updates on the two infrastructure projects, exclusive of the um, property discussion. Any other questions? If not, um, the only other business under new business here is a first class liquor license for Cafe Oma. Um, so if there is a motion, um, I'll make a motion uh, to approve that liquor license. Great. So we have a motion to approve the first class liquor license for Cafe Oma. I'll second. And we have a second from Emily. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, um, we can vote. All those in favor of approving the first class liquor license for Cafe Oma, please signify by saying aye or raising your hand. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Great. Motion carries. So with that, for this last item, um, if it is the board's pleasure, we can go into executive session. It would just require a motion. I'll make that motion. Great. So we have a motion from Suzanne to enter into executive session at 6.55. Is there a second? Yes. We have a second from Emily. If there's no discussion, hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of entering into executive session at 6.55 p.m., please signify by saying aye or raising your hand. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 